Welcome back, everyone. This is Eric, KJ4YZI with Ham Radio Concepts. Thanks for following along. If you're new to the series and you want to learn about HF bands one at a time, click the subscribe button, then go back and start at the first video about 10 meters and work your way up. This is the last video of this first mini-series on HF bands, learning one HF band at a time. 160 meters. Some stuff to learn about it in this video. It may be for you. It may not be for you. But I know a lot of people commented on previous videos. Don't forget 160 meters. I wouldn't forget. But let's learn about this band quickly. We'll take a look at it and see what you could expect to find as a newly licensed amateur radio operator. Let's get into it. So let's look at 160 meters on the U.S. Amateur Radio Band Chart from the ARRL. Now we started this mini-series at 10 meters, 28 megahertz, and we worked our way one video at a time, and now we're at 160 meters. A little fun fact, 160 meters is actually not an HF band. It's an MF band, medium frequency. Now I wouldn't advise going around saying, excuse me, sir, but this is an MF band, not an HF band. You might turn some people off that way. Every manufacturer calls it HF capable 160 through 10, so in your head you can consider it MF, but call it HF as far as I'm concerned. 160 meters goes from 1.8 megahertz to 2 megahertz. General, advanced, and extra class operators all enjoying the same privileges across the band. Sorry tech guys, no CW only here, like you had on 80 meters. Now 160 meters, there's a lot of different modes and stuff that you'd find on other bands there. But this is a band seldom used for several reasons that we'll get into after this part of the video here. But I want to note that the AM broadcast band, you know, 540 to 1590 or whatever that is, uh, is, is a neighbor to this. AM broadcast is just below this. So do you remember back in the day, maybe when you, your pop came home from work and you listened to AM radio and it was very staticky, it was hard to tune in sometimes, and other times at night it would be a lot better or, uh, you know, the, you, you had electrical interference that was buzzing into it. Well, 160 meters is kind of the same way. It's influenced a lot. If you have a bad power line or a leaky transformer, it'll blank out this entire band. If the solar index is bad or there's a lot of solar noise, forget it. The band could be so noisy it's unusable. But there's some other features on why it's, why it's hard to use this band, and we'll show you that. But 160 meters... Uh, definitely is a band that goes way back to World War II. In fact, if you look at this right here, avoid, avoid interference to radio location operations from 1.9 to 2 megahertz. And they were actually referring to something like Loran, which was used back in World War II on this frequency. And Loran was back in the day before they had GPS. They used Loran to map positions and locations back in World War II using radio, and they use this frequency. Now, I don't know if there's any more radio location operations on 160 meters these days, but it says right here, avoid interference to them. But that's what that's referring to. Taking a look at DX Maps website again, and remember guys, this is only people choosing to put their propagation reports as spots on this map. This is no way to show you that the band is not open in your area. You have to get out there, listen on a radio, call CQ to determine that. But with the gray line here in the middle, you can see here during the daytime, not a whole lot of activity posted on this site as far as contacts on 160 meters. At night, though, you can see there's quite more activity over here in Europe, Asia, even down here to islands and New Zealand and Australia and such. So you can see nighttime is definitely a lot more action than during the daytime. Now, as the gray line moves to the U.S. and it becomes night over here, you'll probably see a bunch of gray line DX contacts on the map going from the U.S. to Europe. At the same time, mostly on the list, these are all CW from what it seems to be reported here. So you can see all these are CW. Now, if I go to the PSK Reporter website, there's a video on how this works on my channel. These are all digital contacts on 160 meters, all modes in the last 15 minutes. And you can see that there is not a whole lot of digital action that's been picked up by the spotter network in the U.S. during the day. But in the night, you can see there's quite a bit more digital activity here. 
So definitely winter time, night time, best time for 160. So you think, well, I'll just set up a simple dipole for 160 meters. Well, it's not going to be that simple. Let me show you why. In the middle of the band, call it 1.9 megahertz, you're looking at 246.32 feet for a half wave dipole, roughly, depending on where you're operating in the band. That's 123.16 feet on one side. Now that's t more than twice as long. No, it's, it's about almost twice as long as my 80 meter dipole, which would barely fit on my property as I staggered it. So think about this. If you have the real estate to do that, maybe you can set that up. But again, you have to be a quarter wave roughly above the ground to make it really efficient. I mean, if you set up a 246 feet wire, 15 feet off the ground, it's not going to be that good. So the longer the antennas and the lower the bands, the higher you have to get them off the ground. So get a 246 feet antenna and try to get it 100 or so feet in the air. That's going to be pretty challenging. That's a lot of reason. That's one reason why a lot of people don't work 160 meters. But think about this. So a quarter wave would be roughly 123 feet long. Now, what happens if you're mobile? That's another reason why it's almost impossible mobile, because you'd have to get a compromised antenna that would have 123 feet of wire electrically shortened down into a manageable form, like an eight foot whip. But it doesn't mean that's going to be efficient, even though you have a match because you have that much wire wound around that antenna. And on top of that, you have to have a suitable counterpoise to go with that vertical. And the metal in your car is just not enough to match as a counterpoise with this. So consider the elements. I'm not telling you don't do it if you have the real estate, but the average person that lives in an apartment or maybe on a quarter acre property is not going to be able to set up one of these antennas. So what could you expect to find as a newly licensed amateur radio operator on 160 meters? Now, this is another one of those bands like 60 meters that I really haven't done too much of anything with, but I did make a scheduled contact one time with some kind of ugly um, compromised antenna just to say I made a contact on that band. But my knowledge and thought here comes from some people I know that are avid 160 fans as well as some research online. Now, I remember the first time I learned about 160 meters and somebody that was a big shot in ham radio that thought he knew everything. I remembered him telling me there's nothing on 160 meters except a bunch of old folks. And that's probably the worst, the worst thing he could have said to validate his education on ham radio, because there's a lot of experimenters. There's a lot of avid operators that are really building antennas and building amplifiers and people that know a lot about the bands, but they stick to 160 for a challenge because of the antenna size and the conditions, but also because you can find readily available a lot of people that are probably surplusing or giving away AM transmitters, AM broadcast transmitters that people with technical knowledge convert to use on the amateur bands. So a lot of times they're using homemade amplifiers or they're using, you know, amplifiers you could buy from your favorite manufacturer. A lot of people on 160 meters operate, typically operate CW and digital modes. There is some sideband out there, although in my travels listening sometimes when I'm scrolling around, I don't hear too much on sideband anymore. And that might be due to the fact that a lot of the people that are operating there are trying to battle the noise or they just feel that it's impossible on sideband to work um, 160 meters. Now, this band is probably the last place you want to go on QRP or mobile because of the antenna size that we talked about earlier and the noise. My little QRP radio here does 160 through 6, but I could tell you it's going to be impossible to talk on 160 with a simple wire antenna. Even an elaborate antenna that does 160 meters, it's still going to be compromised. I still got to battle with a lot of noise. Maybe at night on a very quiet day in the peak of the solar cycle, May I use that on QRP? But by no means take my opinion and please go out there and try it. Don't say you're not going to do it because I said I don't do it. Use your own research and your own uh, technical education and experimentation in this hobby and see if it works for you. But uh, a lot of times 160 is a seldom used band. There are people 
that you, you know are there looking for countries they've never found anywhere else because there's always somebody out there that's only working one band and the only way you're ever going to get that person is if you join that band with them there are some nets on 160 primarily uh cw nets or maybe you know local rag chews people that get on 160 and uh normally those people are not new to the hobby they're usually uh, seasoned experts or operators that have been doing 160 meters when it was AM only because AM back in the day was where it was at until sideband came and everybody didn't want to go to sideband but then sideband took over and nobody uses AM. I invite you and encourage you to get on 160 meters with somebody on AM and check it out. It's extremely cool. It's something I want to do one day if I ever get some real estate to put up a 160 meter antenna. So that's the final band in this little 10 part mini series about learning HF bands one at a time. And as I said, we got some other mini series coming up, but I do have a couple products I want to show you. Um, some radios that I think are interesting coming up in videos, so stay tuned. I also have a couple related videos I want to show you. So a lot of stuff coming now. I'm buried with material for videos. So make sure you stay tuned. And 73, thanks for watching. I hope this little mini series enlightened you. Leave a comment below on what you thought about the series, how it has helped you, and how you're going to be out there and get out there and be the best operator you can be. 73, guys, thanks for watching from KJ4YZI.